Have you spoken to your brother? Paul's able to speak to our parents uh, mostly every day. And uh, so he was able to speak to them yesterday. I haven't spoken to him since October 2018. Um, but he is able to speak to them, and, and he conveyed his disappointment. The White House let us know the night before uh, Brittany Griner was freed that their release was going to happen. And so we were able to process that privately. You know, we were able to have discussions that we couldn't have uh, when it's actually uh, going on. And then the U.S. Embassy also called Paul, so he didn't have to learn it from Russian media. So I think he had been able to process some of the information even before he'd been able to call our parents. And so he's obviously hugely disappointed, but uh, uh, I think some of that disappointment or some of the depth of disappointment, maybe because our hopes had been so high that there would have been a, a resolution. And you, your hopes were high because you th you thought that he was part of this Brittany Griner deal for Victor Boot. We are confident he was part of the original offer that the U.S. government made. I think the U.S. government, in trying new things, and again, the, part of this evolution of how they're trying to get to grips with wrongful detentions, uh, they made an offer in I guess, June or July of, of this year for both Paul and Brittany Griner to come home in exchange for something from the Russians. And it, it seems to have been Mr. Boot. Uh, there was never a chance that Russia was going to go for a two for one uh, exchange, but they might have gone for a two for two or something else. So I think we were hopeful that, you know, the, the State Department being so public about it, that maybe this meant that it was actually going to happen. Um, and I think what we found is that in the end, it hasn't happened that way. Um, and, and so Yes, I mean, Paul had gotten to the point where he was thinking about, well, where will I live when I return to the United States? And that's the sort of uh, idea or dreaming you start to have when you think you're going to be free. Um, and uh, it's hard now to imagine what his mental health will be like as he realizes he, he's got to go back to surviving day to day like he has been. He, he fears that he may not be able to get back home, uh, that he won't survive that long. Does that concern you? Yes, and I think that that's, a, a, that's one of the many outcomes that could happen, and we've known that from the very start. Um, he's in his 50s. He's in a labor camp. It's not a great place. Uh, I think he described it as having two inches of fish a day is what his protein is. Uh, they have no fruits and vegetables coming in anymore because of the war with Ukraine and the sanctions that are biting the Russian economy. So I, I think, you know, he's in a very difficult place, and right now he's got a bit of equilibrium for his physical health, but again, you start to ask the question on the mental health, on the physical health, how long does a person last? How many, how many years do you ask them to go through this? So, so there is this theory out there that Russia may want this uh, German assassin. Have you heard about that? I, I mean, have they spoken to you about that, that that could be a, a possibility? Yes, I've heard about Krasikov, and I don't believe Krasikov will ever go back to Russia in exchange for Paul. He's, he's a murderer and, and assassinated a Georgian in Germany. And I can't imagine any country would give up that sort of a person, even to an ally, to get their citizen home. So I think there are there are options out there. And, and I think it really draws a, a really interesting line. How far does a Western country have to go? How far would Canada have to go again for the Michaels in China or, or uh, the U.S. government for Paul in uh, Russia? Um, and how close do we have to get to becoming like the hostage takers themselves? How brutal do we have to become? in order to uh, protect uh, our citizens. And I think there's a line that we can't cross. And so we need to look at maybe de-incentivizing de these wrongful detentions rather than saying, well, you know, we will consider everything like sending assassins home. There has been concern, especially among Republican lawmakers. Uh, they've been voicing their concern that the exchange for, you know, a celebrity basketball star for a notorious arms dealer, Victor Boot, that it sets a dangerous precedent, that, that it puts a price on Americans and Canadians' heads, that, that uh, we could just be snatched up in, in some of these countries. Uh, and, and this exchange of hostages um, is setting a dangerous precedent. What do you think about that criticism? I think it's wrong. Uh, we have had 50 Americans who have been held in uh, wrongful detention around the world. There's uh, Maj Kamal Maz in Syria. There's uh, Siamak Namazi in Iran. There are uh, Kylie in uh, China and Mark Swyden in China. There's so many who are already, uh, and we haven't seen any let up by any of these bad actors. We saw the, the two Michaels in China. So I, I think to say, well, you know, there's this potentially bad outcome. We already have the bad outcome. So are we either going to fix it, which is to bring these people home under less than perhaps uh, optimal circumstances, or are we going to fix it by trying to stop it before it happens? And I think the U.S. government in uh, the executive order that President Biden passed last summer um, started to take some steps. They, he has delegated power now for um, uh, 
uh, uh, US staff to work on coming up with strategies to try to de-incentivize, to stop it before it happens. We've seen Canada provide leadership on arbitrary detention. Uh, I think all of these countries now are starting to realize this is gonna be a growing problem and there isn't a good solution right now. And so if we are always reacting after the person has been arrested, that's going to be the hardest way to uh, respond. There's been some talk that this puts um, your, your brother's case back to square one. Other people say, no, no, um, we're still doing this. We heard the president say we're not giving up. What are the next steps to bring him home? It's definitely not square one. I think what we know now is that uh, for four years, Paul has been uh, a hostage of Russia and two people were mentioned as a possible exchange candidates for him, Victor Boot. Konstantin Yaroshenko, and they've both gone home. Uh, the US government has gone through a list of other uh, potential exchanges uh, and the Russians weren't willing to do any of them for Paul. So we now know that all of that is essentially off the table. It has, has, has cleared the way in a, a sense. So while we may not have gotten a, ahead of where we were before, we haven't gone back to the start. Uh, and I think it will give the US an opportunity to think about, well, now we know that these people or these things, these properties, diplomatic properties or whatever, aren't on the table anymore. What else can we do? And perhaps it'll give them opportunities to think about, well, this is what we can do to plan before the next one happens, because it's going to happen again and it will happen again in Russia. You've been very gracious. Your family's been very gracious. Paul has been very gracious, um, welcoming uh, Brittany home, saying, look, this had to happen. Um, and yet you're still waiting. Um, how optimistic are you? Well, optimism ebbs and flows. <laughs> Uh, I'm always hopeful. I'm always hopeful that something will happen. Uh, obviously, you can't you can't tell in this situation when it will happen. Um, the U.S. government has shown a will and a confidence about bringing Paul home that gives me some comfort. I realize that what they're doing is difficult, and I realize too that the U.S. government and I think Canada and many other Western co uh, countries are way behind the curve compared to the hostage-taking nations at figuring out how to respond to this. But I think they're getting better. And I think once they have gotten it better, and unfortunately, Paul may pay some of that price of learning, um, it may be harder for these countries to do it in the future.